Back to our top story, where there are anti-government protests continuing on the seventh day in Egypt, calling some people calling for the resignation of the country's president. Let's get the latest from our correspondent, Paul Sleer, who is there right now. Well, Paula, this is now continuing for the seventh day, and Egyptians now have taken their time to put forward a leader that can possibly oppose Hosni Mubarak. Now, what made them choose Mohamed El Baradei? Well, firstly, it's worth noting that it was late on Sunday evening when Mohamed al Baradei addressed the hundreds of thousands of protesters who, as you say, for seven days now have been demonstrating downtown in Tahiri Square. He said that he had been chosen by opposition groups, by the political organizations that have organized these demonstrations. He said that he was prepared to head an interim government if called on to do so. And once again, he reiterated the rallying call of thousands of Egyptians for Hosni Mubarak to step down. Now, the, um, the address was not a major surprise. I mean, Mohamed al Baradi has been a name that's been bandied about here in the last few days as a possibility in terms of unifying this very fragmented opposition party, opposition force. It is worth noting that it took protesters six days to appoint him, and this is largely because Hosni Mubarak, since he came to power 30 years ago, has been intent on suppressing opposing views, and, and, and as a result, these demonstrations have been slightly chaotic. Now, al is a name that is well known to the international community, but here in Egypt, he is a relative small player. He is much better known on the international scene, where he is the former head of the International Atomic Energy Agency and is also a former Nobel Peace Prize laureate. But certainly the opposition voices here getting an impetus with this new appointment. Okay, well, the death toll has now reached over 100, and it's still early morning in Cairo. Do you think there's going to be more violence ahead? Well, last night, as we saw in previous nights, the protesters out in downtown Cairo defied a curfew, thousands of them gathering in Tahiri Square. Morning prayers have already happened. No doubt that as the day progresses, there will be an increase in calls for Mubarak to step down and the possibility of growing violence. Today is the seventh day of demonstrations, and so far we haven't seen any indication from Mubarak himself that he is prepared to address the concerns other than appointing a vice president, a prime minister, but on Sunday afternoon he did send his fighter jets over Tahiri Square. They flew quite low, and there the crowd was given the message that Mubarak will not be leaving without a fight. It is worth noting, though, that the main problem that people here are facing at the moment is that of lawlessness. The army is in full control, and they have been allowing demonstrators to come and leave the protest. The police are nowhere to be seen, and what this means is that ordinary citizens are having to protect their properties against vigilante groups. Some of them are people who, who broke out of prisons on Sunday. Some of them are people who simply raided police stations and stole weapons and ammunition from there. And they've been parading the streets in some, some neighborhoods. They are in control of the neighborhoods. And that is really the major concern that people here, particularly in Cairo and other cities, are facing. All right. Well, world leaders are watching the situation in Egypt closely, and we see that the political future of Egypt remains quite unclear. Now, what do people there in Cairo expect to happen next? Well, it, it's really difficult to say. I mean, the protesters themselves say that they will accept nothing short of Mubarak stepping down. But certainly with these latest shows of force on his behalf and, and, and no address to the people since Friday, he is giving a message that he has no intention of doing that. Now, this morning, it took me about an hour to reach the office, and that is largely because the curfew is still in place. So aside from those protesters, you have ordinary citizens staying in their homes too frightened to go out. The sense you get is one of unpredictability. The sense you get is instability and really a situation that can flare up at any moment. It does seem at the moment as if violence is on the horizon. Just how long these demonstrations will continue and just how that violence will end remains to be seen. Talking to protesters, though, what many of them say is that if Mubarak does not step down, overseas, particularly Europe, beckons, and, and I filed this report in that respect. First, he sent in his army. Then he reshuffled the government. Next came the Air Force. People's voices here are loud, but they're being drowned out by F-16s and MiG-21s flying overhead. Mubarak is not going down without a fight. Thank you, Mr. Obama. 
This is your friend. This is Hosni Mubarak. This is your friend. And the American involvement, reminiscent of earlier revolutions in Eastern Europe. No question about it. What happened in Georgia with the Orange Revolution, uh, or rather the Rose Revolution in, Georgia, in uh, Ukraine with the Orange Revolution, 2003-2004, was part of a long-term strategy orchestrated by the Pentagon, the State Department, and various U.S.-financed uh, NGOs like uh, Freedom House and National Endowment for Democracy. And like those earlier revolutions, people mobilized around a common goal. Abdul Nur came all the way from Aswan to get rid of a dictator. He, he tried to, to beat us with the police. He failed. He tried to, to beat us with army. He failed. The Russians must help us. Ahmed Abbas is an engineer, qualified and jobless. But he says he can't find work because of corruption. We can't find job. He, he paid to one inside the company 60 thousand Egyptian pounds so he can work in the company. And as a result, Europe beckons. Most of people want to go to Italy, want to go to Greece, want to go to England. So people in Egypt want to leave this country because they are very frustrated and they are looking for better life, for better future. And for Europe, that means mass immigration and the problems that come with it. May Korshed lives abroad but got caught up in the violence on a trip back home. I don't think at this, I think there's enough momentum at the moment that people will just continue to just go out and protest until something is done. Um, I think people are just fed up. The casualties keep climbing. Young faces, victims of an aging regime. <laughs> Mohammed El Sibai was with his cousin when he was shot dead. He took a bullet in, uh, in his head and the last word he said before he died, Tahya Mosr. He's what's well, meaning in, in English, um, um, may God protect Egypt forever. But whether that protecting will be with or without President Mubarak is still unclear. Well, as the seventh day of demonstrations gets underway here in Egypt, no doubt the international community will remain focused on what happens here, as will Egyptians themselves. I'll be bringing you more updates throughout the day. Thank you very much, Paula. We'll be getting more live reports from Cairo throughout the day, so do stay with RT.